Hey guys, how you doing? G.I. Joe here, and welcome back to my bunker here in Atlanta, Georgia. It has been a while. Um, took a little time off after our extensive BBR YouTube war season uh, to take some time off for last half of the summer before school started and spent some time with the family traveling, etc. So good to be back, but I just wanted to hop on here and give you an update on bloodbath so you may or may not be aware that there is a tournament coming up here and at the end of september so actually about a month away about four weeks and uh, it's here in atlanta georgia area and um, if you want to go to sireblood.com backslash community uh, you can register for his website and kind of see the information regarding the tournament and i'll put that link in the description of this video but uh, the reason I am coming on here is I wanted to show you, uh, just got this new book in from Sire Blood. He actually just handed this to me today. This is the version 3.1. So there are a few tweaks and changes to this that we've been play testing. And uh, everything's official and ready for the tournament here in about a month. And so I thought I'd go through some changes here with you guys and maybe just talk to you through uh, the book. Now, um, I'm assuming these books will be available for sale at some point, and I think Sire's gonna come on with a video and let you know about that. But if you want the cards, um, as you know, there's a card deck that you can get on makingplaincards.com, thanks to people like Matt Todd. So shout out to you, buddy. Thanks for all your hard work. Um, but he has made the, uh, he has made available the Bloodbath 3 rule cards and if you don't want to buy a whole new deck you can buy just the replacement card set so uh, i think he has a video on his webs on his youtube channel matt todd and i'll try to put a link to his uh youtube channel as well in this description so let's dive into this um disclaimer i'm going to assume that you have a general knowledge of the bbr and uh, that you are familiar at least with the rules as it pertained to last year's tournament um, if not, you can go check out some of my video series that I have on my channel, or you can go to sireblood.com backslash community, and I think Sire has uploaded a few videos up there. But let's talk about some uh, general changes here. So let's open up. Uh, of course, here he's added a few more things that, that are differences than G40. I won't go into all, all of these, but we're going to talk about a few different things. Uh, this is the beautiful new book he's had made, by the way. Okay, there's some, some components. Okay, winning the war. Now, as we all know, the in order to win the war, the Axis have to get 12 victory points by the end of the eighth round. And everything is the same, with the exception of a couple things. One, there have been two victory points added. One being, right down here at the bottom, it says the Reich point, which is Germany plus Italy have 70 on the income tracker. Now, we play tested the Reich point um, earlier several times where Germany had to control certain territories and it just wasn't working. It just wasn't even feasible. Um, and so what he decided to do, which I think is a really good idea, is just a combined income. So Germany's income plus Italy's income has to equal 70 or above by the, and they have to maintain that by uh, all the way through the end of the eighth round, okay? And so what that does is it allows Germany and Italy to determine what their Reich is. If they want the Reich to be mostly Russia and North Africa, fine. If they want it to be all of Africa and some of the Middle East, whatever, okay? So uh, I think that is great. Now that does not include national objectives, so it has to be on the income tracker. Okay, the other one that was added was the Imperial, okay? The Imperial point, which is Japan has 52 IPCs on the income tracker. Once again, Japan can determine how they want to obtain those 52 IPCs, whether it be all the islands down here, with all of China, into the Middle East and India, whether down into uh, Australia, uh, into, into Russia. So um, they essentially have to double their income in order to get that point. Now, the other thing that has changed is the, um, the resources, okay? The resource point says access control three of five resource territories. Well, that is still the same. However, uh, this is the old three, uh, 2.9 BBR map, but this resource from Western Ukraine is no longer here, okay? And it has been added to Manchuria. So just so, for your notes, just so you know, 
Western Ukraine is no longer a resource teria, territory, sorry, but Manchuria now is. So the five territories are Siberia, Manchuria, Caucasus for three, Ukraine for four, and Urals for five, okay? So that is the only difference in the victory, uh, the victory points, okay? Uh, and it goes into more desc uh, description on page seven, all right? Game setup, game setup, all the same, okay? Game board and the map. Let's talk about the map. Now, as far as changes from last year's BBR, of course, you know that last year we added the Trans-Siberian Trans Railway um, and the shipyards and different things like that, which we won't go into because I already have a video on that. But the one major change in this map uh, this year is Alaska, the Aleutian Islands. That is going to be a, a walk-on, okay? So uh, essentially, if, uh, if the J Japanese land on Aleutian, they can then step into Alaska the next turn. Same thing, any Americans in Alaska can step into Aleutians, it's just one move, all right? So what that means is, of course, the United States can rail, once they're at war, they can rail up to Alaska. Actually, they can rail one, two, three, up to the Aleutian Islands. But keep in mind, they can't do that until, until they are at war because they can't rail through Western Canada until they are their ally, which is until Japan attacks or the uh, or round four, okay? Whichever is sooner. So keep that in mind. Now that shouldn't be a big deal because uh, you know anything that the United States puts here is gonna need a transport, okay, to get anywhere else. And they could have done the same thing. They could have taken transports and bought stuff and moved it to those islands anyway. So. I don't think that's any type of game breaker, but it just provides maybe another little opportunity, all right? The other math, map change, rather, from last year's is that Bessarabia, Bessarabia is now worth one IPC. And I think that's a really good move because this territory is fought over back and forth, especially if the Germans try to take a southern route. So Bessarabia is now worth one, and I think that IPC was pulled off even Kiski, whatever, even Kinky, whatever it is. So this territory is now worth zero, and Bessarabia is worth one, which makes sense. Make the territories that are fought over worth an IPC and the ones that aren't worth nothing, okay? And that's why we made the change from Malta to one and took away Gold Coast. All right, so that, um, those are the only map changes from last year's uh, BBR tournament, okay? So let's go on to the next thing. Political situations are all the same. Okay, nothing is different there. Uh, okay, China rules. Now, China rules is going to be totally different. Now, China rules are on page 18. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you here about the China rules. Now, um, some of this is the same as BBR last year. Some of it's a little bit different. So let's talk about what was the same as last year. China will still get three cavalry at the beginning of the game, and they can place anywhere on the board. Okay. Now, China can never have more than three cavalry on either on the board or in the queue. So, for instance, if there are three on the board right now, I cannot purchase another cavalry. As soon as one is killed, now I can purchase a cavalry, okay? However, you cannot purchase a cavalry anticipating one of these being lost in a battle. So keep that in mind, all right? But that is not any different than last year's BBR, okay? As far as tanks, China can purchase up to two tanks for the entire game, no more than two, and they can only be one per round. But in order to do so, the Burma Road has to be open. Got it? And you can only place them in one of two places, Sichuan or Yunnan, okay? But you can only do one tank per round. So let's say round one, Japan fails at Yunnan, China can buy a tank and stick it in Yunnan. Round two, Japan attacks Yunnan, they fail. The Burma Road is still open. China can buy their second and last tank and place it either in Yunnan or Sichuan, whatever they want to do. Okay, of course, once they place it there, they can move out. But again, that's the same as last year's BBR, so nothing new there. But what is different here, ladies and gentlemen, is China is now able to step into Burma Shan State and French Indochina, as long as well as Hong Kong. Now the Hong Kong step in or attack is um, already allowed by out of box rules, as you well know. So 
China is now allowed to step into, oh, and I missed one, also Siam. So basically, and Malaya, sorry guys. So essentially China can non-com in or attack any of these territories. Now they cannot non-com into here, obviously, unless UK is at war, okay? It's the same as the out-of-box rules. But, um, Okay, so they can attack into here. The one thing though is they cannot spawn into Southeast Asia. They can attack into here, but they cannot spawn. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So those are the China rules. Soviet rules on page 19, nothing new and different there. Mongolian rules, same thing. Uh, Canada. Uh, Canada, it's the same rules as last year's BBR. So nothing new there. Same with Argentina. You know, some of these rules I can't remember if they were implemented for last year's BBR or not, but I believe so. There is a naval base in Argentina, and Argentina, uh, there is a national objective for Germany where the Germany gets at 53 IPCs, it activates Argentina and Chile as act pro axis. And so they will get that fifty. They will get that five dollar uh, IPC bonus every turn. All right. Japan, uh, nothing new here other than the uh, Empire Point that they that Sired added, meaning that Japan has to be at fifty two IPCs in order to on the income tracker, not including national objectives. So uh, the only thing that's really going to watch on the Japan rules is the Kamikaze, which is different than out of box. Um, in order to activate kamikazes, one of, the, one of the following islands have to be captured or recaptured, or Japan is making less than 36 IPCs, okay? So for instance, let's go over here. If Japan is making 42 IPCs, and Japan has taken the Philippines, if the United States takes the Philippines back, they can't deploy the kamikaze yet. When the United States takes the Philippines back, that now activates the kamikaze for any subsequent attack, okay? So which means if Japan takes it back again, and then the United States comes back again the second time, then they get the kamikaze. Or if Japan attacks the Marianas, right? Japan attacks Marianas, there's no kamikaze. But then after the Marianas, if then they stage an attack on the Philippines, now the kamikazes are activated, okay? Or, so that's how that first one reads. Or in the event, if Japan is making less than 36 IPCs on the territory income, not national objectives, but if their IPC tracker income is less than 36. Well, we know they start with 26. So, um, you know, it's very feasible that they might be under 36 um, at some point if things aren't going too well. All right, so that's the kamikaze thing. Um, all the technologies, um, there are a few minor changes here, and I'll look. I'll show you these. The, uh, the self-propelled artillery is the same. Super battleships the same. Heavy bombers. Heavy bombers is different. Okay, bombers now roll four dice on attacks up from two. Now, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but bombers now, rather than roll one die at four, they will roll two die at two, okay? Statistically, it's the same number of hit points. However, rolling two dice is slightly statistically higher, as I understand it, uh, on getting a hit than rolling one, okay? But a heavy bomber would get four at two as opposed to two at two. Super carriers is the same. Heavy tanks is the same as last year. Improved transports, okay, this is slightly different. Transports now carry three ground units, okay, which is the same as last year. However, uh, they also now, all transports defend at one. So if you have, like as it stands now, two transports paired together would have a combined arms, right? Two transports compared or paired together would have a combined arms defense of one. But if there's only one, it would be an auto kill. Now, if you have heavy transports or improved transports, I should say, 
both of them will get to defend at a one. So you're rolling two dice at one as opposed to one at one, all right? Super submarines is the same. Jet fighters the same. Improved shipyards the same. Uh, radar and ATC, the one change we made was rather than unlimited scramble, air bases may only scramble six planes, but only three of them, or up to three, may be allied, okay? Everything else is the same. So, for instance, uh, the Gibraltar move, you know, air base here, pile six U.S. fighters. Well, if there were six U.S. fighters here and three British, you could only scramble three U.S. and three British, okay? Now, if there were six British fighters here, all six British fighters could scramble, right? Or maybe you have, but basically only three allied fighters can scramble at a time, okay? So if UK owns the technology, only three planes of their allies can scramble in addition to their three, if that makes sense. So if you want, might wanna check out that on page 22, whenever you do see the book, but that should also be in the cards, all right? The research and development is the same, the technology as far as how to develop it. I won't go into that. I have a, a video that I made previously on that if you wanna check that out. Uh, event sequence is the same, okay? Um, combat movements all the same, event sequence. The combined arms is all the same. Um, you know, we haven't changed anything with that. I think the only thing See here, there was something about attack, but no, that's not it. All right, never mind. Now, I do want to get to, to unit profiles here for a second. Okay, the shipyards is the same. Yes, let's get to unit profiles. Um, so, what we want to do is unit profiles on yes, anti aircraft. Now, for anti aircraft, the new anti aircraft rules are as follows. Uh, it's kind of a combination of, of Global 40 out-of-box rules along with the old traditional classic game in that um, you also get to fire on flyovers. So, for instance, if Taranto's going to happen and the British want to fly over one, two, three, four, and then try to land on a carrier in 97, if Germany has AAA, 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 that means they get fired on here, here, and here, and then they have to deal with the naval battle and the potential scramble from here. So there are flyovers on combat moves only. Okay, non-combat flying back to their to England. Well, not that they could do that because there's not enough space, but in this instance, if they did have enough movement to move back, uh, you obviously, triple A's do not fire on non-combat. Okay, they do not fire on non-combat. Now, the other thing about triple A's is triple A's negate target selection, all right, from tactical bombers, all right? So that's important about that. And so you might want to, that's on page 40, it says enemy flyovers, okay? And that's where it mentions that. And the other thing about unattended triple A's can be captured. So if you leave a triple A, uh, you, leave, you know, if you're, uh, Russia, you leave a AAA in Bessarabia, Germany can step in and take that, and it doesn't kill it, it automatically becomes German. So keep that in mind. Okay, cavalry's the same, fighters is the same, tactical bombers. There's one thing about target selection that was changed, and that target selection cannot target infantry. They cannot target infantry, okay? Target select, I should say. So the whole Japan thing that <laughs> I've actually done a couple times where uh, you're using all of your tacticals to target select the little single infantry that China leaves out to, for blockers, um, can't do that, all right? So target or tactical bombers cannot target select infantry. Strategic bomber, we've already talked about that. They roll two dice at two as opposed to one at four. The other thing is on battleships. On battleships, triple A are in battleships now, okay? So, and they get to roll just like a normal triple A up to three dice. So if a Japan attacks a United States Navy over in here and they have six planes and they're attacking a Navy with one US battleship, 
the U.S. battleship can roll three dice at one. Um, okay, now if Japan comes in with only two planes, they only get to roll two dice, okay? Same concept as a land AAA, just on a battleship, all right? Now, uh, a couple of things. What also that battleship does with that AAA, it negates any target selection for tactical bombers. So if you have a triple a battleship with a triple A and a tactical bomber comes over to attack the Navy, they cannot target select any of the Navy. Now that's important because right in here, Germany has some tactical bombers. There's some British Navy sitting out here. Well, there's battleships here and here. So that takes away the target select option for um, that. However, I will say this, a damaged battleship does not uh, does not have AAA, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, aircraft carrier, the same, cruiser, same, destroyer, same, submarine, the same, nothing there. The only thing about submarines is a, a, a submerged submarine cannot convoy, okay? So uh, if you, if you uh, whatever, if you have a German sub here and a, and a cruiser comes in, attack that let's say the cruiser from 91 comes up to attack it german sub submerges they can no longer convoy that sea zone okay which makes sense all right we've talked about transports and there you have it guys so i know that was kind of a reader's digest version but um this book um i think i'm one of the first couple of people to have this so thank you sired but uh you can definitely get the card decks um Again, you, you, don't, you don't have to buy the entire card deck if you don't want to. You can just buy the replacement cards. So, like, you know, this would be replaced to add the new victory points. So, you'd pull this one out, slide the new one in. So, uh, I'll put that link in this description. And, uh, again, thanks, Matt Todd, for supplying that to the community. But, guys, looking forward to it. Should be a great tournament coming up in, uh, man, four weeks. So, uh, we'll have some guys over and uh, have a little fun playing Axis and Allies. So, as always, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but um, I'm sure if I do and go back to thinking about it, I'll pop on, maybe do a subsequent follow-up video. But hope that helps, and uh, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat below. And uh, great to be back on the tube. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope your families are staying safe, and hopefully we can get past this mess and get back, to in, back, back into a lot of live gaming, guys. All right, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.